Hi everyone, welcome to another design lesson video. In each video, I'm going to review some key design principles that you should keep in mind when you're thinking about renovating or decorating your space. So if you have a design dilemma and need some answers, feel free to comment in the section below with your questions, or you can tweet me your questions on Twitter or send me your questions on Instagram at design chicky. Your dilemma could become one of these design lesson videos right here. In the meantime, let's get to today's topic. Today's topic is all about the much loved kitchen island. When I ask my clients what would be in their dream kitchen, an island is the most popular response. Sometimes they're wanted for casual meals, sometimes for cooking, and other times it's just for meal prep. And everyone wants the island to be beautiful. A showpiece for not just their kitchen, but their home. So let's review the most practical do's and don'ts when planning around your kitchen island. When deciding on your kitchen island size overall, you must first consider the space around your island. You need circulation space around your island, so the width of the aisle space between your perimeter kitchen and your island is your first requirement. Not only do you need to walk comfortably around your kitchen island and your kitchen, you'll need room to open appliance doors. Always make sure you have a minimum of 42 inches in front of appliances like your fridge, oven and dishwasher. All these appliances have doors that swing into that aisle space and you need to ensure you have room for those doors to open clearly. 42 inches also allow for two people to pass each other when they're both cooking in the kitchen and one person to pass when the appliance door is open. In places where there are no appliances, you can shorten that aisle distance to 36 inches. Once you have your space around the island, you can now focus on the island itself and how you can make the most out of your island. Kitchen countertops are a standard 36 inches in height and the standard depth of cabinetry is 24 inches deep. So that's your starting point. Many of you will want to have seating at the island, so you'll need to increase the depth of your countertop from the standard 24 inches to include for the space where seating will occur. You'll need to provide knee space under your countertop so that guests can sit comfortably at the island. 18 inches is a good minimum, but if you don't want your guests to scuff up the cabinetry with their shoes, aim for 24 inches. The type of seating will affect the height of your island as well. If you'd prefer to sit on bar height stools, then you'll need to raise your countertop from 36 inches to 42. That's six inches above the standard height of your countertop. This usually means there is a portion of your island that will be raised. If you'd prefer to sit on a dining chair, then you'll need to lower some portion of your island to 29 to 30 inches above the floor. That's the standard height of a dining table or a desk height. This is a great way to incorporate a dining table setting if you don't have a dedicated dining room in your home. But I prefer having counter height stools. This will allow you to maximize the full surface of your island without any level changes, keeping your island at 36 inches in height. One other important dimension to remember about seating is that you should allow for 24 inches of width for each stool or chair. So an island with four stools should be a minimum of eight feet long. You'll also want to keep in mind the overall size of countertop slabs, as they too will determine if you'll be able to have one smooth surface or if you'll need two slabs joined together with a seam. Depending on the layout of your kitchen, you may want the main attraction at the island to be your stovetop. The best way to incorporate this hotspot and minimize overhead exhaust fans and ductwork is to have a retractable downdraft exhaust built right into your kitchen island. When cooking, you can raise the exhaust fan through your countertop without having to incorporate something from above that hangs from the ceiling and can look heavy and awkward in your kitchen. It's also important to consider the distance from the stovetop to any seating that you may have in the kitchen island, especially if you have little ones who will be sitting there while you're cooking. Kitchen faucets have become a real centerpiece of the kitchen and many people are tempted to highlight the sink area and their beautiful new faucet by placing it centered on their kitchen island. Having room for a dishwasher next to the sink is a great way to make this area of the kitchen super efficient as well. Keep in mind that if you're prone to leaving dirty dishes in the sink, you'll have that as a centerpiece to your island as well. I prefer to maximize a full flat countertop surface for meal prep and hide other important storage in your kitchen island, like a microwave drawer, root vegetable storage, or books. 
Once you've determined what size your island will be and what activities you'll be providing at your island, you can then move on to style and finish. In some cases, kitchen islands are the opportunity for a great burst of color and style. So there you have it. The success of your kitchen island is more than just its looks and style. Consider first and foremost the space around your island, then its overall size, and finally all the functions within your island that will make your kitchen be the most efficient and effective use of space in your home. An island that is too small or too large or awkward to use can make or break the functionality of your kitchen. So plan ahead and think about all the ways to improve your kitchen's overall plan before you plan the look of your dream kitchen island. Thanks for watching my latest design lesson video. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification button too, so you don't miss the next video. You can follow me on Twitter or Instagram as well. And if you have any design questions, let me know in the comments below, and it could become the topic of our next video. Again, thanks for watching everybody, and I'll see you next time.